Hello friends, I am Adrija. Welcome to my study room. In this video, we are going to discuss about the first chapter of science, nutrition in plants. So before starting the chapter, we have to understand what is nutrition. We all know that we eat food daily. The process of intake of food and its proper utilization in the body is called nutrition. This is the definition of nutrition. It means the process of intake of food. Intake means eating food and its proper utilization in the body. It means that when we eat food and then we utilize it properly to do different kinds of work like running, walking, etc. This process is known as nutrition. Uh, we all know the words carbohydrates, proteins, fats, vitamins, minerals. These are the components of food known as nutrients. In this chapter, we are going to learn about two modes of nutrition, autotrophic mode and heterotrophic mode. In this video, we are going to learn about autotrophic mode in detail. In the next video, we are going to talk about heterotrophic mode of nutrition. So let's begin. Let's discuss about autotrophic mode of nutrition. The definition of autotrophic mode of nutrition is the mode of nutrition in which an organism synthesizes its own food using simple substances is known as autotrophic mode of nutrition. Let's take the example of green plants. We know that green plants make their own food using different raw materials like carbon dioxide, sunlight, water, minerals, etc. So green, uh, green plant exhibit the autotrophic mode of nutrition. This mode of nutrition means the mode of nutrition in which an organism make their own food using different substances. And the organism that exhibit autotrophic mode of nutrition are known as autotrophs. Example green plants, they are known as autotrophs. And they are also called producers as they produce their own food and do not depend on any other organism by the process of photosynthesis. So let's talk about photosynthesis now. Now let's discuss the process of photosynthesis. We all know the process of photosynthesis. It is the process by which plants prepare their own food. Um, the plants prepare glucose and oxygen by utilizing carbon dioxide, water and sunlight. This is the process of photosynthesis. So now let's take the example of this plant and learn more about photosynthesis in detail. So the leaves of plant contain a green pigment called chlorophyll. Because of the chlorophyll, the leaves are green in color. The chlorophyll traps the sunlight from the sun. Okay, so the plant has sunlight now and then and the carbon dioxide is absorbed by the leaves from the air. Done. And then water. The roots absorb water and minerals from the soil. The roots absorb the water and minerals from the soil and send them to the food factory of the plant that is leaves. Um, in the leaves, the process of photosynthesis occurs. And the end products are glucose and oxygen. The oxygen is released out in the air and the glucose is stored in the form of starch in different parts of the plant. So this is the equation of photosynthesis. Carbon dioxide, CO2, this is the formula of carbon dioxide, plus water, H2O, In the presence of sunlight gives glucose plus oxygen C6 H12 O6 this is the formula of glucose and oxygen O2 okay so this is the equation of photosynthesis um, so this was about photosynthesis now let's learn about the conditions essential for photosynthesis now let's discuss about the conditions essential for photosynthesis. These are the four conditions that are essential for photosynthesis. Sunlight, chlorophyll, carbon dioxide and water and minerals. So first let's talk about sunlight. 
and we know that sun is the main source of energy for all living organisms. In the absence of sunlight, photosynthesis cannot occur. So, sunlight is a very essential for photosynthesis. Now, let's move to the second one that is chlorophyll. Leaves of plants contain structures called chloroplast. This chloroplast contain the chlorophyll. The chlorophyll helps in trapping sunlight from the sun um, that helps in making glucose. So, chlorophyll is also very vital for the process of photosynthesis. And then let's move to the third one, carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is present in air which is taken in by the plant through small openings called stomata that is present in the leaves. This stomata helps the plant to respire. And the stomata are present on the lower side, a lower surface of the leaf. Suppose this is the lower surface of the leaf and the stomata are small openings like structures. So these are the stomata that helps the plant to take in carbon dioxide. And if we see one stomata through a microscope, then we will see that it is protected by two this type of structures. These structures are known as guard cells. And this also helps in opening and closing of the stomata and help it to respire. And does the stomata take in carbon dioxide? So carbon dioxide is also very essential for photosynthesis. Now let's move to the last one, water and minerals. We know that the root absorbs the water and minerals from the soil and the roots have some hair like structures known as root hair that helps in absorbing the water and minerals from the soil. And the water is, uh, water is transported to the leaves by a tissue called xylem. The xylem is present over here and this helps in the transportation of water from the roots to the leaves for photosynthesis. Thus water and minerals are also very essential for photosynthesis. Thus this was the conditions, four conditions that are essential for photosynthesis. Now let's talk about synthesis of plant food other than carbohydrates. We know that plants make carbohydrates through um, the process called photosynthesis um, and these carbohydrates contain carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. The carbohydrates are made up of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. These three are used to make proteins and fats. But we know that proteins also contain nitrogen. From where do the plants get this nitrogen? The plants cannot directly absorb the gaseous nitrogen like carbon dioxide from the air. Um, so in the roots of some plants, there are certain bacteria present that changes the gaseous nitrogen into a form that can easily be absorbed and utilized by the plants. Such bacteria are known as nitrogen fixing bacteria. For example, rhizobium. So this was the autotrophic mode of nutrition. In the next video, we will meet in the heterotrophic mode of nutrition. I hope you like this video. If you like this video, please click on like button. And to stay with me, click on subscribe button. Thank you.